One day in the late Pleistocene, an asteroid estimated to be 1.2 miles across split the sky over modern-day Southeast Asia. The gigantic space rock came in at a shallow angle, gouging out a crater more than 10 miles wide and showering the surrounding region with debris. This sounds like science fiction, but it is not. At the dawn of humanity 800,000 years ago, the massive cosmic event reshaped the Earth's environment and potentially the evolutionary trajectory of early human species. The Australasian impact event, which created the largest known tektite strewn field, has been linked to widespread environmental upheavals. This video explores the hypothesis that the comet impact triggered climatic and ecological shifts that led to the speciation of Denisovans, Neanderthals, and Homo sapiens. During that era, Homo erectus still ruled the planet rather than the Neanderthals, Denisovans, and Homo sapiens. Did our distant ancestors see this event, perhaps as a second sunrise or a flash in the night sky? Or did they wake up to find bits of shiny black glass scattered about, objects that weren't there the day before? While unknowable, it is interesting to consider the idea that Homo erectus may well have been the first of us to see such a huge fireball and then to have puzzled over the enigmatic shiny glass that fell from the sky afterward Earth was also pummeled with meteors 790,000 years ago. The distribution of the tektites and the size of the strewn field indicate that the Earth-striking body was at least a kilometre in size and released an impressive 1 million megatons of TNT energy within seconds of impact. The meteor slammed into Earth with such force that the explosion blanketed about 10% of the planet with shiny black lumps of rocky debris. Known as tektites, these glassy blobs of melted terrestrial rock were strewn from Southeast Asia to Eastern Antarctica and from the Indian Ocean to the Western Pacific. The force of the impact is thought to have created a rim measuring more than 300 feet tall and hurled glass tektites thousands of miles. Some of these glass tektites left Earth's atmosphere and acquired their flanged edge on re-entry into the atmosphere. The largest region where tektites are found is known as the Australasian tektite strewn field. It's the largest of its kind, covering a tenth of the planet's surface. Some of these tektites have even been found as far away as the coast of Antarctica. While the impact was not on the level to cause a mass extinction event, it was significant enough to have left a sizable crater. In fact, the findings led researchers to conclude that there were multiple cosmic impacts. In addition to the events in the Australasian regions, a smaller collision at around the same time created the Darwin Crater in Tasmania, Australia. According to the scientists, the consequences were dire. At the local level, there was wildfire and earthquakes for hundreds of kilometres surrounding the impact site, and an ocean impact would have caused tsunamis hundreds of metres high. At the global level, dust and gases were ejected into the upper levels of the atmosphere, blocking sunlight and lowering surface temperatures. Molten glass rained down from the sky over parts of Southeast Asia and Australia and into the neighbouring ocean basins. Recent studies suggest that the crater responsible for this event may be buried in the country of Laos, hidden under thick layers of sediment. This impact would have generated massive firestorms, atmospheric dust and climatic disturbances, drastically altering habitats across Asia and beyond. It is tantalizing to think that members of the Homo erectus lineage living in Asia, best known from the discovery of Peking and Java Man, could have witnessed the Australasian impact. Indeed, the burial age of the sedimentary layer that Peking Man came to rest in, 770,000 plus or minus 80,000 years old, according to a recent study, fully overlaps with the age of the Australasian tektite field. However, no one knows whether the meteor hit the ground and broke up or exploded just above ground level. Either way, the event was devastating. It would have killed off life close to the impact area or entry area. It must have been an awful place to have been at the time. The tektites formed as molten splash material cooled during high velocity movement through the air and range in size from spheres less than one millimeter micro tektites to blocks weighing up to more than 20 kilos. The distribution, size and concentration of tektites in the Australasian strewn field indicate a likely impact site somewhere in southern Laos, northern Cambodia or eastern Thailand. 
Similar to the effects of earlier impacts, such as the Chicxulub event that ended the reign of the dinosaurs, this comet strike likely injected vast amounts of debris into the atmosphere. The immediate aftermath may have included firestorms, a short-term global cooling period, and a disruption of weather patterns. Early hominin populations, already dispersed across eastern Eurasia, would have faced sudden environmental changes. This could have led to the fragmentation of populations and the establishment of isolated genetic pools, facilitating evolutionary divergence through a genetic bottleneck. The resulting genetic bottlenecks could have accelerated evolutionary adaptations in isolated hominin populations. Water dispersal by Homo erectus is accidental. There's no manifest destiny. There's no plot. Russell Chioshon, a paleoanthropologist at the University of Iowa at Iowa City, told National Geographic regarding Javaman. Archaeologists have discovered stone tools dated to around 790,000 years ago in association with the tektite strewn field from the comet impact. These tools, found in locations such as Southeast Asia, suggest that early hominins were present and actively adapting to the transformed landscape following the cosmic event. The presence of these tools near impact-related geological deposits indicates that hominins may have responded to post-impact environmental shifts with increased technological innovation. Evidence suggests that hominins mastered fire by around 790,000 years ago. The need to adapt to colder conditions caused by the impact could have accelerated the adoption of fire for warmth, cooking and protection. In the Philippines, evidence of hominins using stone tools to butcher rhinoceroses suggests that early human species were already sophisticated enough to survive in challenging environments. The Chibanian stage is the name for the geological age starting 774,000 years ago. It is named after Chiba Prefecture of Japan, where a key geological reference point for this period was identified. The Chibanian stage is significant for containing the Brunus Matuyama geomagnetic reversal, which occurred around 773,000 years ago. This marks the point where Earth's magnetic field last switched from reversed to normal polarity. The geomagnetic reversal triggered a series of dramatic events that had far reaching consequences. The ozone layer was destroyed, electrical storms raged across the tropics, solar winds generated spectacular auroras. Arctic air poured across North America, ice sheets and glaciers surged and weather patterns shifted violently. The Earth is a giant magnet because its core is solid iron, and swirling around it is an ocean of molten metal. This churning creates a huge magnetic field, one that wraps around the planet and protects it from charged cosmic rays coming in from outer space. With essentially no magnetic field, our planet totally lost its shield against cosmic radiation and many more of these particles from space could access the top of the atmosphere. High-energy cosmic rays from the galaxy, and also enormous bursts of cosmic rays from solar flares, were able to penetrate the upper atmosphere, charging the particles in the air and causing chemical changes that drove the loss of stratospheric ozone. These conditions would have also extended the dazzling light shows of the aurora across the world. At times, nights would have been as bright as day. The full reversal of Earth's magnetic field took far longer than was previously thought, scientists discovered. By analysing ancient volcanic rocks, researchers found the reversal took about 22,000 years to complete, with the field starting to collapse about 795,000 years ago. Lava flows act as a time capsule of the planet, providing information on the position of Earth's magnetic field at the point it solidifies. Measurements show the magnetic field started to collapse about 795,000 years ago, then became unstable, and there were two partial reversals over the course of 18,000 years before a full reversal that took about 4,000 years to complete. The study stated that the 22,000 years between the onset of instability and the outer core dynamo was not a surprise. However, the complexity of the geologic record between about 795,000 and 773,000 years ago is surprising. The reversal process was longer and more complex than previously imagined by scientists. This event occurred at the time when geneticists estimate that ancient humans split into two groups, one that became the Denisovans and an one that became Neanderthals and modern humans. Indeed, Genetic evidence suggests that Denisovan mitochondrial DNA diverged from that of modern humans and Neanderthals about 800,000 years ago. 
the human populations that migrated into Europe adapted to its cold environments, eventually giving rise to the Neanderthals. Their robust skeletal structure and large nasal cavities are adaptations to colder climates, traits that may have been selected for as global temperatures fluctuated following the impact. Denisovans, a sister group to Neanderthals, appear to have occupied vast stretches of Asia, from Siberia to Southeast Asia. The environmental shifts triggered by the impact may have isolated certain hominin groups in high-altitude or forested regions, leading to the emergence of Denisovans as a distinct lineage. Some hominin populations remained in Africa, where they continued evolving under different selection pressures. The eventual emergence of Homo sapiens may have been influenced by post-impact climate shifts, which altered vegetation and migration routes. Indeed, a recent study notes that, with respect to the paleontology and archaeology related to Homo sapiens evolution, it is of particular interest to consider the Eurasian advances in this field during the last 20 years. As regards the morphological distinction between sapiens and erectus, the geneticists recognize them as subspecies, Homo sapiens sapiens and Homo sapiens erectus, in accordance with their overlapping morphology. The reversal of the direction of evolution in the tree of Homo sapiens sapiens is consistent with the molecular identification of the sister group relationship between Homo sapiens and Homo antecessor and a Eurasian separation into Homo antecessor and Homo sapiens 850,000 years ago within a diversifying population of Homo erectus. Researchers postulate that following the separation between Homo sapiens and Homo antecessor 850,000 years ago, Homo sapiens diverged further into Homo sapiens sapiens and Homo sapiens neanderthalensis 800,000 years ago. The results are consistent with the paleontological established presence of Homo erectus in Eurasia, a Eurasian divergence between Homo sapiens and Homo antecessor 850,000 years ago, and a Homo sapiens divergence between Neanderthals and Denisovans 800,000 years ago. The existence and hence the phylogenetic implications of these studies have remained disregarded, however, among the proponents of the out-of-Africa hypothesis. If true, this shows that Eurasia was not the receiver but the donor in Homo sapiens evolution. The findings that Homo erectus left Africa over two million years ago and returned as Homo sapiens sapiens constitute a paradigm shift in the understanding of Homo sapiens evolution to one that conforms to the extensive Eurasian record of Homo sapiens paleontology and archaeology. The molecular out-of-Africa hypothesis has been considered as an established fact amid population geneticists for some 30 years, despite the early concern with it among phylogeneticists with experience beyond that of the human genus. The paleontological support for the hypothesis is also questionable a circumstance that in the light of expanding Eurasian paleontological knowledge has become accentuated through the last decades. The cosmic impact 790,000 years ago may have been a turning point in hominin evolution, leading to the divergence of Neanderthals, Denisovans, and Homo sapiens. The drastic environmental shifts and migration pressures created by this event would have forced early human populations to adapt in novel ways, driving speciation. Coupled with the geological evidence, this theory provides a compelling narrative of how cosmic events can shape the course of human evolution. Thanks for watching and take care.